Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I don't know what is going on in 2022, but it is epic when it comes to arcade pickups. And my latest pickup is Midway's The Grid. Can't believe it, I got one. It's missing the topper, but hey, we're gonna figure that out. I've already reached out to Galloping Ghost Reproductions and I'm trying to talk to them as well as a couple other friends I have in the business that might be able to help, so we will see. I'm not gonna hold my breath, but they might be able to help because this thing needs a topper. Anyway, in this episode, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna check out the grid. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about it. We've covered it before on the channel, but I am super stoked. Let's check it out. I got a chance to play the grid last year at Galloping Ghost and man, this game is awesome. It was developed by Midway and released in the year 2000. It was actually Midway's last arcade game. It's a third person shooter, which consists of a super violent television game show hosted by a Smash TV like host. Very reminiscent of the movie Running Man. One of the coolest things about it though, is that local multiplayer is possible with up to six players by linking up multiple cabinets. Very innovative for its time. So you're probably wondering, how did I actually acquire this? I thought they were really rare. Well, they are, but there's some conflicting information out there. In the insert coin documentary, they say about 500 to 550 were made. However, there's conflicting information that says that maybe a couple thousand were made. The thing is, that was over 20 years ago and a lot of them were actually destroyed. So to know an exact number at this point is pretty tough, but you don't see them really at all. Although they are scattered in various places around the country. But my goal would be to take the two that we found at Castles and Coasters. If you didn't watch that episode, go check that out. But we found two boards and now I have one working cabinet. So if we ever need to use it as reference for how things are cabled or configured, we now have something that we can go on. But the goal would be to create two more and we've tossed around a couple of ideas and concepts that actually Cole came up with, and I think they're pretty cool. And the idea would be that we would feature them at the Game On Expo this year in Phoenix, Arizona for other people to enjoy. So anyways, that's where we're at right now, but let's go back into the garage and check a little bit more out on the cabinet. Okay, so we're out in the garage, but before I show you more of the good cabinet and the condition it's in, I just got another War Final Assault. So I wanted to show you this. I actually have two of them networked. So if you look, there's one right here and there's one right there. So if I actually start a game, I put credits in here, press start, press start to say, just play, select that character. You can do head to head, multiplayer deathmatch, and then both of those are ready to go. So this one's green and that one's red. So it's totally cool. But the, <laughs> the network that I had to set up is kind of stupid. Okay, so the network switch it came with didn't have a power supply, so I rigged up a power supply right here. But yeah, so that there's an ethernet switch, or there's an ethernet cable rather that goes from this guy uh, down to that and then just connects to the other cabinet right here. So. And then they both uh, link up and they detect each other. So that's pretty cool. But anyways, we'll talk more about that later. Okay, so I'm green and that one's red. All right, check it out. You're going to die. <laughs> Anyway, what we're really here for is the grid, and you can see it's in pretty good shape, actually. The bummer is there's no topper. So we're gonna have to figure that out. The control panel is in good shape. The flight stick is good. The trackball is good. The keypad works. The keypad's really instrumental for this game because you can unlock hidden players. You can start with weapons and do a whole bunch of different things. So the keypad is really insp instrumental. You can even store your character. Um, so as you kind of build up your your character, it'll, it'll store those types of things. Um, outside of that, the design is pretty cool too. So it has like very different design than a standard midway cabinet. Although like you could almost argue that this whole part is a traditional midway cabinet. And then like from here forward, they sort of built this like pedestal looking thing. And then it has like indents where they put midway. It's, it's a very, very cool design. You know, over the side, you have the side art and all that. And I'm actually gonna get new stickers that go in here because there's one that uh, XL Arcade makes that actually has all of the keypad codes. But anyways, so I'm happy with the way it looks. The control panel's good, like I said. The cabinet is good, the artwork is good. So I'm pretty happy overall with this purchase and the way it looks. And you'll notice over here, there is no Astro City. Well, I traded the Astro City and a little bit of cash 
to get this guy. Uh, we don't talk about Arcade 1UP much at all on this channel. I share some things on Twitter and Facebook and stuff like that, but for the most part, I've kind of moved on. I don't really focus on it much anymore. But I am still interested in what they're doing, and I look every now and then. And it seems like they're kind of banking on the future of Arcade 1UP being connected cabinets, so you can play multiplayer. Some of those games, like Street Fighter, they become sort of difficult because you have different skill levels. Well, the grid came out and it kind of came and went, so there isn't like this 20 year history for the most part of people playing it on a regular basis. And wouldn't it be cool to have deathmatch type of a cabinet where you could be playing with other people around the world that you can jump into games, jump out of games. I feel like this would be a really cool cabinet for them to reproduce. I don't know what the licensing would be like, but Arcade 1UP, couldn't you do that? I mean, couldn't you do it? You, you got licenses for just about everything else. I wanna know for the people watching, like if they made a bigger version, you know, because they're, they're making these larger cabinets now. If they made a bigger version of this cabinet and you could play in a large death match with six people at a time, you know, over the internet, would you do that? Would you wanna do that? Would that interest you or is this kind of a waste and would it, yeah, I don't know. Anyways, I just thought of it. I thought it could be interesting, but let me know in the comments below. Maybe that's stupid. And I need you guys to tell me, dude, no, no, dude. Bruh, 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 dumb. That's what my son sounds like, him and his friend. They're all, bruh, 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 bruh. Like they're almost like frogs, ribbiting, but it's really, they're saying bro. They're like bro, 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 but it sounds like ribbit, ribbit. It's like bruh, 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 bruh. Okay, so let's check out the back of the cabinet. There is the PCB this ran on. This is the Zeus 2 hardware. It's a 32-bit architecture. Uh, the only two games that Midway used this for was The Grid and Cruisin' Exotica. So, you know, being the tail end of Midway and this being the last game they released, um, those are the only two games that actually ever made it on this hardware. It's pretty capable hardware too, as you can see from the graphics in the game. Uh, other than that, it's JAMA, so you can see your JAMA connector right there. You've got a power supply right there, so it's pretty empty for the most part. And then you've got where all the connections go into the control panel, including the keypad and the joystick and the trackball. And you got a subwoofer. <laughs> this thing actually sounds really, really good. It's got a great sound system. All right, guys, well, we're gonna play this out of here. It about wraps up this video. You can see you have six characters you can choose from, and then there's other ones that are unlockable, like Scorpion. Yeah, Scorpion from Mortal Kombat. It's pretty cool. These beginning levels are actually really easy, and then it gets a lot harder. Yeah, already on the next level. It gets a lot harder, trust me. Anyways, guys, if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel. Put your comments below. What do you think about The Grid? Is this a game that you played? Is it a game you want to play? I don't know. To me, it's a game everybody should play. It's so fun. <laughs> There's lots of really cool aspects to it. And honestly, so much fun if you have a bunch of people playing together. All right, guys, we will see you on the next one.